Breaking news, guys. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have been officially dropped from Spotify. This is catastrophic news for the couple, but something that I've been saying for a long time would probably happen. So I am not surprised in the slightest, and we're going to break this down today and all the news and all the articles surrounding it because it is fascinating how they're trying to spin this as if this is somewhat okay when really it is a catastrophic implosion. And I think the beginning of the overall collapse a brand Sussex. Hello everyone, my name is Brittany. Welcome to Royal News Network. I offer compelling royal commentary. So if you guys are interested in hearing more about Harry and Meghan and the rest of the royals for not only Britain but across Europe, feel free to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you back. And so this broke this evening at about six o'clock or so. It started with the Wall Street Journal stating that apparently Meghan Markle's archetypes podcast at Spotify won't be renewed. This is after weeks, if not months, of slowly trickling information that's saying, oh, there's a season two coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, and then now it officially has been canceled. And I had always been on the reserve about this because until a a industry publication has confirmed that it's happening or Spotify does, this was totally up in the air. And we had been seeing this stuff coming for a bit. Spotify had been laying off workers. They were pulling back in their podcast because they had overinvested and overindulged in this. And I figured at some point, Meghan Markle's podcast would be on the chopping block. Archetypes, if you've listened to it, it's like nails on a chalkboard. It is boring as all get out. It was uninteresting. It was shallow. It was vapid. There was just not much substance to it. And despite it getting up to the number one status on Spotify, it was a Spotify exclusive. Therefore, Spotify could technically manipulate the charts in order to feature a podcast they wanted to promote. I think this is what happened with Megan's podcast. Other people within Spotify have always said that basically that Joe Rogan's podcast is truly the one knocking it out of the park all the time. The other ones do okay, but nothing reaches Joe Rogan level of success. And Spotify had come to find out, well, we overinvested too much and definitely in Harry and Megan. The details we got about this are fascinating and show what I have been saying for a long time now. These two have no talent, no creative drive, and they are unable to produce content at the speed and the frequency that they need to. I produce more content than they do. I think I've done two, 300 episodes of Royal News Network. I've done live streams. I've done so much content and I have so much, I have additional content on my fashion channel. If you haven't been there, Royal Fashion News, I'll actually be doing a breakdown of my top looks from Catherine's Trooping the Color. I'll be ranking all the looks that she's done because Trooping the Color is this weekend and I also have a special unboxing something that I got that I want to show you guys so I'm super excited about that and I also do like I said live streams every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock eastern time 10 a.m and so we will be doing a reaction to tripping the colors this weekend so it will be a rather special live stream so I'd love to have you there and I usually do an announcement about it and everything but me and my little operation I am one person and I far outperform what Harry and Meghan can do and that they were dropped by Spotify, I'm not surprised in the slightest. Together, the two of them actually being on a podcast together, they have one single episode where they did diddly squat on it. They had other people record, send it in, they mashed it together, they did some voiceover, and they're like, oh, we're done. And Spotify's probably like, okay. And then it took a year or more, I think about 18 months plus, because that debuted in December 2020, about the time they announced the deal, a couple months after, a month after or two. And then it took a whole nother, so that was in December 2020. It wasn't until August 2022 that they actually released Archetypes. It was 12 episodes. It was boring as heck. It added nothing to the conversation. And it really wasn't something that had staying power, especially if they weren't constantly feeding the content beast. And here's something else if you've never created content before is you have to keep doing it. If you stop doing it, if you don't do it, things don't pick up the way they used to. So when it comes to Harry and Meghan, they just never put in the drive to actually make any of this happen. And that's what's coming back to bite them in the butt in addition to their lack of talent and lack of 
consistency, creative skill, difficulty, so many things. So let's get into these articles because we're going to go over the Wall Street Journal deadline, Variety, and The Hollywood Reporter because each of these have a bit of a different angle and a bit of a different side of the story. And it's fascinating to see how the industry is, I think, slowly starting to wise up to the fact that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have nothing real to contribute. So here's what the Wall Street Journal article says, and they're the ones that broke the story. So it begins, Meghan Markle's archetype Spotify podcast won't be renewed for a second season, according to people familiar with the matter, a casualty of the audio company's overhaul of its approach to podcasting. Producers of the show, which explored labels that hold women back, have been told that a second season won't move forward, the people said following discussions months ago about the possibility of one. So what this tells you automatically is that Harry and Meghan were dropped. They weren't, it, it wasn't a mutual parting. It's very clear to me that they were constantly trying to get the second season green light and Spotify's there looking at the numbers and they're like, no, no, we're sorry. Because here's the other thing about Harry and May or Megan's podcast is that it needed to have staying power. Yes, you could have the weeks that it was appear, the weeks that it debuted, that's great. But did it fall off a cliff after that? And if it did, if nobody's listening to that content anymore, why would you invest more of that content if yes it had a peak but nobody's going back and listening to it again it doesn't have any staying power people aren't going back and listening to it again and again because they enjoyed it and so that is a huge catastrophic red flag for whatever harry and megan are producing and i think netflix is definitely looking at the same thing so it goes on to say megan Markle's podcast is the only project she and her husband prince harry completed for spotify one project after almost three years now, two and a half years, that's pretty pathetic. After signing a roughly $20 million overall deal with the company in late 2020, the couple hasn't met the productivity benchmarks required to receive the full payout from the deal. People familiar with the matter said, so they're not getting all their money. Definitely not the 20 million, absolutely not. They produced one single podcast series of 12 episodes after two years or basically a year and a half at the time when it initially debuted. It was about a two year old deal at that time. How can you in two years only produce one single podcast? I produce these episodes weekly and it's only me. I record this, I'm gonna go downstairs, I'm gonna edit it, I'm gonna try to put in pictures where I can, I put in graphics and everything. I do that all by myself. And I also do a newsletter, Royal Wires. If you're interested in the Royal News of the Week, I do have that as well if you wanna check that out over there on Substack. So this is just ridiculous to me that Harry and Meghan cannot produce the level of content that they need. This is a content age. It's content or perish. It used to be publish and perish, which it still is in the academia world, but it's content or perish. You need content, engaging content, fulfilling content. And that is something Harry and Meghan were not able to produce. I would guess and venture, I have no information about this whatsoever. This is entirely a guesstimate, a thought that I would imagine for their podcasts. Because again, they produce one thing of 12 episodes. They got at most two to five million would be my guess. You're looking at comparing to people who do weekly podcasts or podcasts every three days, two days a week, at least once a week, all the year long and take breaks here and there. Harry and Meghan don't even remotely approach that. I can't imagine they would even get half of the money they were initially promised. And that is huge. And if other companies are looking at them, if I'm that company, I'm thinking, okay, Basically, Spotify said they dropped you. You were floating. You were constantly pushing for a second season. Spotify dropped you. Why? Why did they drop you? Because if you weren't meeting productivity, and all I can see are 13 episodes floating out there, in two and a half years, I would have dropped you too. Because people like me, other independent producer, content producers out there, there's a ton of us on YouTube. According to Dads, Murky Meg, there's so many others, and they've all produced so much more content than Harry and Meghan with I'm sure just by themselves. And so you're telling me that you can't produce more content? I don't think so. You can totally do it. You just have to have the drive, the will, and the work ethic to do it. And it does require sacrifice, time, energy. I don't have much of a social life because I do this. And hopefully one day I'll be able to outsource more things, but I'm not quite there yet.
Oh, I need organization. That's that's my Achilles heel. It also says a cancellation is a sign of the continuing correction in the podcast market, a format popular among listeners, but one that has proven hard to make profitable for Spotify and many of its rivals. Again, there you have YouTube competing. A lot of this stuff is also moving to video podcasts is, is something that's growing. I have a podcast idea I would like to do. It'll probably I would assume if I can get, I have a great idea, I really do. But I'm. it'll be history based, it would probably be, debut sometime probably in the fall next year because I wanna do a lot of research for it. It'll be hopefully very interesting, very engaging, but this stuff takes time, it definitely does, but I would do a lot of it myself, but still, it's something where, again, there is a huge market out there, but your stuff has to be good, and there's a lot of competing things. You can slap up anything out there. I actually did produce a podcast about history, and if you can find it, I don't know, I'll give you a gold star or something. It is still floating out there, and it was something I truly enjoyed, but it was a lot of work. More work, I would say, in a way than this channel because it required a lot more research. And I am a person who loves research and I wanna make sure everything I'm telling you is correct and accurate to the best of my knowledge. And I that I gather good sources. I was actually doing some initial searching for research for the project I'm thinking of doing for podcasts. And a couple of the things that first came up were self-published. And I'm like, it's frustrating to me that and weird to think about that there is a huge figure in history that does not have a lot of books dedicated to this person, but that also you would even have to shift through self-published manuscripts, which means basically that they haven't gone through a rigorous academic review process. So the books I'm looking at are from the Yale Review. There's a whole Yale series of books on the English monarchs. That would be the focus of it. And so I, I would be getting those because at least I know, even though academia is not the end all be all, that the most of those people could read what original sources are available for that particular topic. Because there's this whole thing about how you gather research that's very important. So again, this stuff with Harry and Meghan, it's just shocking how much they lack the depth to get something together. And in a quote, it says, the team behind Archetypes remain proud of the podcast they created at Spotify. Megan is continuing to develop more content for the Archetypes audience, the non-existent Archetype audience, on another platform. Said a representative of William Morrison Endeavor, the talent agency that recently signed Markle. Conversations are ongoing for other homes for Archwell content, a person familiar with those discussions said. But here's the thing. If you want to jump ship, that's fine. You need a plan though when you jump ship. And I think the relationship was severed and I don't think they're getting a ton of deals because if they had a ton of deals coming in, they would have been signed already. They're, they don't. And so they're not. And the market already says it's it's correcting from overindulging in this space. And honestly, again, if I put my podcast up that I'm planning on, what I'll do is I'll get it together and I will, unless somebody comes to me, which I somewhat doubt, I would put it on Apple and hopefully I would get sponsors. Maybe I would do some special content behind the scenes through either membership here on this channel or I have a history channel idea or you know you can do Patreon or something like that. There's different avenues of revenue that you can go through, but going for a single podcast home, you are always going to limit yourself to a certain extent. And Spotify was really the only group in this area doing exclusives. I think Amazon Music has done some as well. There was actually a particular podcast I really enjoyed on there. It was a true crime one. And honestly, Megan's podcast just doesn't have broad appeal. It was very narrow in the audience that it could attract. And obviously things that move the market are news, their true crime, history does it, there's comedy, there's a couple of avenues that do tend to move the needle. Meghan Markle, oh, let's talk about the archetypes that pulled women back. And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> Do I want to go to a feminist conference? Not really. And that's just what that feels like to me. And so there's just nothing there that I feel like has broad appeal. And obviously, clearly, even though they're shopping this around, other people aren't biting. Spotify and Archwell executives had discussed a second season of Archetypes given the first season's success, some of the people said. But discussions stalled for months. Spotify told the team working on Archetypes in recent weeks that the second season wouldn't be made. Again, Megan's team was pushing this and Spotify wasn't biting. Obviously, they're like, I'm sorry, but 
we're looking at your numbers and sure you had a big gross, but then it went like this and then boom. We, we need more than that. And we need you to produce content. Now, obviously you're being difficult, you're being demanding. There was actually, I think it was Jamel Hill, I believe, demanded that Spotify pay her as much as they do Joe Rogan and they dropped her. Cause they're like, well, Joe Rogan's bringing in hundreds of millions of viewers, or at least he has like 11 million viewers per episode and you don't have anything even approaching that. Why in the world will we give you equal compensation to him when we could just drop you and save that money anyways? Maybe we'll give it to him or maybe we find somebody better. Again, these are business decisions and if it was good, they would have kept it, but that they didn't keep it. Again, screams, something's going wrong behind the scenes. And then I thought this correction was interesting. Meghan Markle is continuing to develop more content for the Archetypes audience on another platform, according to the WME representative. An earlier version of this article incorrectly attributed the quote to Archwell Productions. So this is about how Harry and Meghan's world is changing and how Meghan is really becoming the focus and the center of Archwell in general while pushing Harry out. William Morris and Endeavor represents Archwell broadly and by extension, Meghan as the main talent, but she didn't really have a lot of talent to begin with. There was a reason guys you didn't sign her when she was an actress that hasn't changed. The royal title hasn't really changed that. And Harry, I don't know where he is within all the steals, but he wasn't really didn't do anything for Spotify and Spotify signed them both. They wanted them both. And they, I'm sure they were wanting insight into the royal world and they got this archetypes and they were like, whatever, we'll let her do that. If that's good, we'll, we'll go on. And they're like, it's not good enough. We're sorry. Deadline title was Prince Harry and Meghan Markle part ways with Spotify. It says the Sussexes has separated from Spotify. Deadline has confirmed as part of their reported $20 million deal inked back in 2020, Harry and Megan had podcast archetypes, which the latter hosted. The podcast, which explored labels that held women back and touted such guests as Trevor Noah, Mariah Carey, Mindy Kaling, and Serena Williams won't be getting a second season despite talks. Again, they were trying to get this off the ground. They put in different articles and different things. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. And Spotify's like, nope, sorry. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are rethinking their deals, not deal, deals to find better homes and partnerships for content. There's also a chance that archetypes could wind up elsewhere. We hear At the end of April, the Duchess of Sussex signed with William Morrison Endeavor with the agency also repping Archwell, her content creation label with Prince Harry, building the duo's film and TV production, brand partnerships, and overall businesses is a priority at WME. Markle's team at WME includes Endeavor CEO Ari Emanuel and brand rep Brad Slater. So again, it also sounds like Netflix deal is up in the air and, it, and they probably got a good chunk of money from Netflix because their documentary did so well, their series, but they also had a bomb and live to lead. And they also had the heart of Invictus is coming up. I just did a video on that. I'll link that over here in the upper corner. And there's a question of how well hearts of Invictus will do because Again, Harry and Meghan are such a toxic brand. This also contributed, I'm sure, to Spotify's decision. They're like, nobody likes you. And because of that, we're not getting an audience because of you. You are not bringing in an audience. So why would we sign you up to do more when we can't even get an audience for you to begin with? So again, Harry and Meghan's inability to connect with people and their broad swipes against the monarchy, their woe is me narrative has fallen so, 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 so poorly in the realm of public opinion that even though they have, you could say a huge footprint. I've said this before. I think they create a lot of noise, but not a lot of revenue in terms of they're not turning people into subscribers. And that's what Spotify wants people to do. They want people to listen to archetypes and subscribe. If you're not subscribing, it's not worth it. It says the Joe Rogan experience, Alex Cooper's call her daddy. Anything goes with Emma Chamberlain distractible with Mark Iplier and the armchair expert are all talent driven Spotify shows currently in the top 25 charts. Meghan Markle was not there. She was there briefly. I think some of that was inflated purposely by Spotify to make it look more successful than it was. But now that the months have passed, it's been almost a year. They're like, this thing ain't doodling diddly squat. And you can't seem to get your act together to produce content. It's not just that they, she started it. She just should have kept going. But that she stopped. It's like, well, we're just doing one season of 12 episodes. Spotify is like, they're like, you've had 
a year and a half, what were the, you doing? Yes, they did have a child, but again, you can film a podcast episode from your couch in your pajamas if you want to. You don't have to get dressed up. Like I had to do my makeup. <laughs> it's like eight o'clock at night. I had to do my makeup for no reason except for to do this episode. Again, it requires sacrifice, work ethic, all these sorts of things that clearly Harry and Meghan don't have. And it's again, coming back to bite them in the behind. So now Variety is a little bit more favorable publication to Harry and Meghan. They obviously got that huge interview with Meghan last year in the fall. And so they have a bit more of a sympathetic spin to this, but it's also interesting. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's Spotify deal is likely coming to an end. Not, not confirmed like Deadline or <laughs> the Wall Street Journal. It's like, Likely. Yeah, no guys, it's dead. <laughs> Spotify's exclusive podcast deal with Prince Harry, Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex is likely ending with the couple having delivered just one show under the agreement Variety has confirmed. Reps for Spotify and Archwell Audio, the couple's podcast production shingle, which I don't get why it's shingle, but declined to comment. I think that that speaks volumes too, is that they don't really have a response for this. And I think they were hoping maybe they would find another home. And I'm sure Spotify said, okay, you can find one. We'll wait. And then they're waiting and they're waiting. And Spotify's like, you know what? We just, we're just going to confirm it to somebody and get it out that way. Um, and that's how it went. According to a source familiar with the situation, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have wanted to move away from exclusive Spotify distribution to find a new home for their audio projects. What projects? You have no projects. You haven't done anything. Like, oh my gosh, you guys have not done Dilly Squat. You have one podcast with 12 episodes and another single podcast. You have nothing to farm. You have ideas. You don't have a, a audience. You cannot farm out your productions if you don't have an audience to show them that, hey, here's this. I'm sure they're all looking at it going, oh great, those numbers are great, but, but what about those cratering numbers back there? How are you gonna do that? Well, we're gonna have another se season of 12 episodes. They're like, okay, well beyond that, what is what are you gonna do? Well, then another season with 12 episodes. What, in like 2030? No, 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 this is not how it works, honey buns. <laughs> you got these deals based on your royal title, that's it. And regardless of that royal title, that gave you a privilege to get those deals, a deal somebody like me doesn't have, but they will require you to work at some point. You need to work, honey. You need to produce content, which you seemingly incapable of doing. Another source said that Spotify expected more content, expected more content. Of course they did. Why would you pay somebody $20 million to sit on their butt for two and a half years and produce 12 episodes? You wouldn't do that, regardless if you're the Duchess of Sussex, honey. Noting that nearly three years after inking the pack, they have delivered only one series. Essentially, putting the overall deal in limbo. The show is Markle's archetypes, in which she deconstructs the history of societal stereotypes about women, which premiered in August, 2022 and hit number one on the company's charts in multiple countries. Oh, and here is the key quote here, which Variety does a lot of things complimenting Harry and Meghan, but at the end they, they add this, this is the last paragraph. And to me, this is huge and key. It goes against what, well, the Wall Street Journal initially reported. The looming end of Archwell Audio's pact with Spotify is unrelated to the podcast group's restructuring, a source familiar with the situation said. What this tells us right now is that they would have kept Harry and Meghan regardless of their podcast restructuring if Harry and Meghan could actually produce content. That's what that tells us, is that they they didn't make this decision based on the restructuring of podcast, but from a purely business, you aren't making us enough money, you're not worth the investment, we're pulling our relationship now situation. That's what happened. Regardless of Harry and Meghan trying to find new deals, trying to go elsewhere, trying to get out of this exclusive deal, Spotify was the one that said, we're not making any money from this. I'm so sorry, this has to end. and. I don't think that probably went over very well with Harry and Meghan, particularly Meghan. Archetypes was her baby, even though she really didn't do a ton of work on it. She was, I'm sure, very proud of the work, quote unquote, that she produced on there. But again, it came back to there's a real world situation here that does not rely on royal titles, but relies on business. This, These are business deals. You need to 
be an investable product and Harry and Meghan are not that. <laughs> the Hollywood Reporter had the most apt title as well. It said, Meghan Markle's Archetypes podcast not renewed at Spotify. It said, Spotify has not renewed Archetypes, a platform exclusive podcast from Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's Oshwell Audio for a second season, according to people familiar with the matter. The podcast, hosted by the Duchess of Sussex, released last August and featured guests like Serena Williams, Mariah Carey, Mindy Kaling, Constance Wu, Paris Hilton, Issa Rae, Michaela J. Rodriguez across its 12 episode first season. The series also had the highest first week streams at launch for a podcast in the US, according to last year's Spotify wrapped list. And again, we've known because other companies do this, that sometimes these numbers can be a bit inflated. So again, take that information for what you will. Architects was released as part of Archwell's multi-year exclusive deal with Spotify, which was first announced in late 2020. In the years since, Years, not year, years. The partnership has resulted in just the one season of Archetypes and a holiday special released in December 2020, around the time the deal was announced. As a result of the low output, low output, compared to other exclusive Spotify deals, which typically require multiple series or multiple episodes of a show released on a regular basis, the pact between the two companies is expected to come to an end. A person with knowledge of the matter told The Hollywood Reporter. So again, this matter is coming to an end. And it doesn't sound like, at least on Harry and Meghan's part, this was a deal they totally wanted to end because again, they had $20 million on the line. And I imagine their bills are expensive and I think they only made at most a quarter of what they could have made. Again, two to five million is what I would guess they made. Because yes, they did have a big bump, but again, these companies don't just look at the big bump, they look at the overall picture. And I think that's why they waited too, is that they waited a long time, I think, to see how it performed beyond the headlines. Once the headlines ended for Archetypes, did anybody care? And before we go into my analysis, I will say that Omid Scoby, the unofficial official spokesperson for Harry and Meghan, often described as Meghan's friend in various publications, has also revealed through a spokesperson for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex that they confirmed Spotify and Archwell Audio have mutually agreed to part ways and are proud of the series we made together. I call BS on this. If it was a mutual decision, it would have been Spotify also on this statement. It's not, although I will say Richard Palmer, who's another rural reporter, said that a statement was made together between Archwell and Spotify. But again, I just don't totally buy this. I think from everything we've seen, I've re read you guys the four various articles that Three of them are entertainment industry articles. One of them is obviously the Wall Street Journal. And they're all discussing about how failure to complete the contract, content not being up to par, and just it seems like general difficulty has led to behind this split. They were not happy with the product Harry and Meghan were producing entirely, and they decided, you know what, we're gonna cut our losses. We have other podcasts like Armchair Expert, Joe Rogan, Call Me Daddy, all these other ones. They're doing exceptionally well with big talent, and they're not having the problems Harry and Meghan are trying to keep up with production. And again, 13 episodes over two and a half years, that's really, really quite a pathetic turnout from Harry and Meghan. And again, I think it bodes poorly for them with other businesses going forward. So what does this all mean for Harry and Meghan? I think it means that this is the start of their downfall because once one company drops you, it's easier for others to do the same. So if Netflix is looking at them going, Hey, we're going to see how the hearts of Invictus do because yes, your initial documentary did fantastic, but then maybe it cratered too, because once the headlines were gone, did anybody care? Maybe not. And if they didn't care, then why continue? And then you also had the fact of that the next thing they had, which was live to lead, which they purchased from somebody else. The production was mostly done. They did voiceovers. Their names did nothing for it. This thing didn't even chart in the top 100 probably. It didn't. It wasn't even a blip on the radar. Nobody cared about it. So they're looking at the hearts of Invictus thinking to themselves, okay, we're gonna see how this does because there's an interest in the Invictus games. Obviously a lot of people wanna support our soldiers. However, however, Harry and Meghan are not likable entities. And so will 
their association, their brand toxicity, their ability to crater themselves, destroy their own credibility by making up a paparazzi chase in the streets of Manhattan, will that lead to declining views and people investing because they have become such a liability? And I think that's what Spotify determined. I'm not saying it was the total reason, but I think the, the stunt in New York, I think that really hurt them in the eyes of not only the public, but their business partners going, okay, especially if you're a Spotify executive, you're like, I live in New York. I've been to New York. What are you talking about? Why are you making such a fuss over this paparazzi chase? That probably didn't happen. So we're already having trouble with you doing things. You're already difficult to work with. You're going through your staff members. You're funneling through them at least once a year. You're not worth the effort. And now we have a big problem of your public credibility on the line. They sunk themselves. And Spotify's like, we're not playing this anymore. We're not playing this game. You couldn't really produce anything for us. Other ideas you had were bad. You couldn't get Harry to do something. There should have been an Invictus podcast. Oh my gosh, that would have been so easy. Grab anybody from any team, put them on there, have them share their story, have them share their story once a week. It wouldn't be that hard. You could do this constantly, but that they didn't screams that either they couldn't, they didn't want to, or they just don't even have the work ethic to get it done. And Spotify's like, we're done here. And Harry and Megan, because they could not, I'm, I'm sure as Spotify, given their clout, you could, you could question how much clout they have, but given their overall footprint, I imagine Spotify gave them time to farm this out and try to find another buyer and they couldn't. And because they could not find another buyer, Spotify had to go public with it. Now I could be totally wrong. This is just my supposition. That's just my opinion, just my thoughts, but this isn't good news for Harry and Megan. And I'm sure they wanted the news to be, we've left Spotify and oh, look, we're on Amazon music. Now we're going to work with them, but they don't have that. And Spotify is like, well, we have to, we're getting questions about this. This is about the time when your podcast should come back. And I'm so sorry, but we're, we're, this is going to come out one way or another. And it did. And I'm sure Harry and Megan are scrambling because if Spotify goes, I don't think Netflix is far behind. I don't think it is. And they signed the deal with Netflix around the same time as Spotify. So this was late 2020. They have two products for Netflix that have aired now Two. One was a success, but it was trading off the all the royal stuff. They knew that would be a success. That was why they hired them. The second one led to lead, which was a, again, a layup project. It was a dud, I think originally already totally and completely bombed their association with it. Even though there, there was a public reaction because they were a part of it. Nobody watched that thing. Nobody watched that thing. And so their name in that project meant nothing without the Royals. They are nothing. So that didn't go anywhere. Hearts of Invictus. That's a question because people again want to support the troops, but they don't want to support Harry and Meghan and Netflix needs contents because the writer strikes is going on. Producers might strike, actors might strike. So they do need the content. So they're going to let it go forward. But I think this is what Netflix is looking at. How well does that thing do? If that thing does okay, they may still continue with the relationship, but if it bombs, if it doesn't chart at all, if nobody seems to care about it, if it doesn't move the needle, they're going to be like, you know what? We're done too. We've played this game with you guys for a while. Pearl was an epic disaster. I think that thing was in production hell. I think Meghan Markle is exceptionally difficult to work with. And they were like, if we thought we had faith in it, we would have done it. That they didn't screams that they just had to drop it. And so now again, we're looking at this whole situation and Hearts of Invictus is the next big evaluation because this is a second project that's not maybe perhaps directly trading off their rail connections. It's kind of a bit more than live to lead. But if that thing doesn't do well, Netflix is probably going to go, you know what? All we have from Meghan Markle is this vain notion that she wants to do rom-coms without any particular plan, except for hiring Julia Roberts and trying to recreate the, the, the magic of rom-coms because everybody loves a rom-com. What happened to the rom-coms? I mean, oh my gosh, her ridiculous statement from Variety about that. It's just it's so cringy to me because it's so lacks depth. And I thought it was interesting. Somebody on Twitter talked about how Megan, if she stuck to maybe fashion, travel, food, you could say somewhat 
shallow topics, she would have done so much better. Meghan Markle tries to be deep. She tries to be intellectual and tries to give all this stuff to society and proclaim herself as this very charitable person. But her heart, she's not. She's vain, vapid, and shallow. And if she had stuck to vain, vapid, and shallow projects, I think she would be in a much better place now than trying to create something that was going to be earth shattering because she doesn't have the depth to do that. And I don't think, again, she has the drive to either because if you look at her career as well, she's always somewhat taken the easy route and she hasn't tried to make herself better as an actress. She hasn't challenged herself at all. And so it's not a surprise that even in this situation, a royal title does not magically give you a work ethic or talent. And so she's coming in there thinking she's the hobnob. And yes, your title got you in the door. But at the end of the day, they're all like, we need content. We don't need vapid promises. We don't need these word salad nonsenses about how great you are and how great your husband is and how you're going to change the world. We need you to actually create a, an episode a week. That's, that's the bare minimum that you can do for a contract worth $20 million. So I would not be surprised if more things are not on the line. As somebody mentioned as well, William Morris Endeavor, they wouldn't have gotten any money from the Spotify or Netflix deals because those deals have already been signed. And so they probably wouldn't have gotten much from that, but that they signed Megan seems to indicate that perhaps both of those deals are on the line and perhaps we'll get news fairly soon that Netflix has dropped them as well after the Hearts of Invictus drops because they're like, they can't produce anything. And for me, the whole venture to Hollywood was around them actually being able to be producers and be creatives, which neither one of them have the talent to do, I don't think. Meghan Markle, as an actress, she did the bare minimum. She went in and she wanted to look pretty. She said her line, she did her sex scenes, and she left. She didn't add anything. She wasn't looking for scripts, trying to be a producer, trying to be a director, a screenwriter, anything like that. She did the bare minimum basics and she's trying to hit in the big leagues and that's not happening so when we see a relaunch of the tig suit probably because at her heart at her hearts of hearts she's a vain vapid and shallow person and the best she can hope for is influencer status right where she started so she's gone from influencer to royalty back to influencer what a meteoric rise and fall for megan Markle. So guys, let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think of this news. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.